here in America. Um, I'm proud to see this crowd. I hope that it gets bigger. I'm proud to see so many young people because this is important. I think that we, we've kind of stopped teaching our young people the importance of their voice. And I'm proud to see the diversity here because it affects anybody. Anybody who is involved Justice is affected by everything that's happened today. Today's bittersweet. Um, never before has a cop been convicted. And for that, we've made a step forward. But it's just not enough. Two years with time served is not enough. We have been enslaved and we have had to fight for our freedom, fight for our rights, and we shouldn't have to fight for any of that because we are no different from anybody else. But we do, and you have to remember that we do have to fight. I've told this story before, and for those of you who have heard it, forgive me, but the day that Meser Lee was first convicted, I logged on to Facebook, and everybody from the Bay Area was making posts about Meser Lee. Everybody in the rest of this country was talking about which team LeBron James was going to play for. And there is a serious problem with that. This is a national issue, but it's not treat being treated as a national issue. Maybe that's because of media sensationalism, or maybe it's because we have become too blind to real issues. We have the media, we have entertainment, and it all makes us shift our focus to the things that are really important, and that is a huge problem. We need to look at the man in the mirror. We need to realize that in order for anything to change, we have to make that difference. So the question becomes, what are we gonna do? Because we can't wait for another killing in order to make our voices heard. That's where the problem lies, is we weren't loud enough before Oscar was shot and killed. We had. We had Dr. King, we had Malcolm X, and when they died, everything just kind of went away. And that's where our problem is. We need to stay active, we need to have our voices heard, we need to be strong, we need to be loud, but we need to maintain civility at the same time. Black on black crime is a huge issue. And if we're treating each other the way that we've been treating each other, how are we setting an example for the way that others need to treat us? We need to make that example, set that example for the way that we are entitled to be treated. And you guys, especially the young people out there, are the ones that will be able to make that big difference. So treat each other respectfully, be loud, be heard, and don't lay stagnant to the way things are because it's not going to change anything. Thank you. We're here to say more speech, so we're gonna put some music to it, you know, show y'all how we do it. Yeah, let me say, man, we never even expected justice from this system, man. I hope nobody out there is surprised, man, since the beginning of this country, this whole country is founded on, on black people's labor and, and killing indigenous people, man. This, this is a, a, a fucking illegitimate system right here, man. And if, and, and if you guys don't know that by now, man, just look around. Look at the signs. Look at two years for killing a black man, man. Killing a black man that was face down on the bar platform, man. And look around Oakland, man. They pushing black people out, gentrifying us, man. Buying up all the property, man. They don't want us here, man. So if you don't know that by now, man, then you need to open your eyes, man. And there's things we can do to fight back, man. And the first thing is to unify, man. It's come together, man, and get a black political party, you know? Quiet crowd. I hear a quiet crowd. Most of y'all are, the, I see black, I see white, I see Asian. This ain't a black issue, this is a people issue. Our system is guilty. And it's true, and it's true. No fundamental change for the better can happen without a revolution. This verdict is totally illegitimate and this whole damn system is totally illegitimate. People talking about black on black crime, well what kind of system has people pitted against each other, struggling and hustling every day just to survive? What kind of system is waging these endless wars in the Middle East? What kind of system treats women, half of humanity, the way that women are traded like fucking cattle all over this world, you know? And right in, right in the streets of Oakland. Like cattle. This is a system that needs to go. That's why I support the Revolutionary Communist Party, because everything they're about is about making revolution, building up our strength right now, getting organized, getting conscious, so we can get rid of this whole system as soon as we can. And I'm not just talking about the police, I'm talking about the courts, 
these prisons that are overflowing with black and brown people. I'm talking about this precious constitution that actually enshrines slavery and genocide of the native people. I'm talking about the whole thing. I want to read you something from this statement that's going around. You guys, I really want to say everyone should get this and spread it and study it. It says, the days when this system can just keep on doing what it does to people here and all over the world. The days when people are not inspired and organized to stand up against these outrages and to build up the strength to put an end to this madness, those days must be gone and they can be gone. And no, now is not the time to go all out to seize power away from the people who rule over us, but now is the time to be working for revolution, stepping up our resistance, building this movement for revolution, and I challenge you, make today, make today the day you get serious about what it's actually gonna take to change this. Make today the day you get serious about making revolution.